Carrie Prejean has now written a book, Still Standing, The Untold Story of My Fight Against Gossip, Hate, and Political Attacks. Carrie, good morning to you. Good morning. Before we get to the book, obviously everybody wants to know about this sex tape that surfaced last week. There is one, correct? You can call it whatever you want to call it. If you want to call it a sex tape, that's fine. But Well, what do you call it? It was me by myself. There was no one else with me. I was not having sex. Um, I sent it to my boyfriend at the time. I was a teenager. Um, I cared about him. I trusted him. And, um, you know, but the main point is that there has been a campaign against me to try and silence me for the past seven months for the answer that I gave at the pageant. So you made this tape when you were 17 years old. Is it basically an example of sexting, something you sent? Um, yeah, I think now they call it sexting, mm -hmm. but, you know, it was me in the tape. You can call it whatever you want to call it. If you want to call it a sex tape, that's fine. But, you know, I was by myself. I sent it to a boyfriend. It was for, you know, private use. But does that justify what I did? No. It was the biggest mistake of my life. And did I th think it would come out now and haunt me? No. But I think that a lot of young people can learn from this. And, you know, nothing is private anymore. Nothing is private. But the biggest thing and the reason why I wrote this book is because Americans believe that their beliefs are under attack. And this is proof. This is so you, you believe that somebody sent the pageant officials got their hands on this tape. How'd they get it? I have no idea. I'll, all I know is there's been a campaign against me to try and silence me. They've tried to embarrass me. They've tried to humiliate me. They've tried to attack me. And I'm still standing. And they can't, they can't take that. So, Carrie, why did you drop the lawsuit against pageant officials? I mean, you've charged them with libel and slander and religious discrimination. If you feel that strongly about it, why drop the lawsuit? Were you worried about this tape becoming public? Well, everything that happened in mediation is completely confidential. I made a promise, you know, not to discuss anything that was discussed in there. And if I'm the only one that's holding up to that agreement, then I stand by that. But did the tape trigger it because you were going to sue them and then suddenly like the suit said, is dropped? Like I said, everything that was discussed in mediation, I am not allowed to discuss it. This book, it obviously doesn't take on the sex scandal, but it, it does take on what happened to you in the pageant. Why did you feel the need to write it? What hadn't you said that you needed to say? Well, I think it's important for people to understand. I think that Americans heard only bits and pieces of, of what really happened. And I think that there is a liberal bias in the media. And it's unfortunate that, you know, conservative women are attacked. They are attacked for their beliefs. You know, and it's, it's unacceptable and it shouldn't happen. And so many Americans are frustrated. So many Americans believe that their beliefs, you know, are under attack and they should be silent and free speech doesn't exist. Since when does free speech not exist? Since when is someone able to go on national TV and call someone the most awful names you could ever call a woman and get away with it? And you have been called absolutely terrible names, but there are people who say they want to call you on the carpet when they feel you're being a hypocrite. In the book you write, our bodies are temples of the Lord. We should earn respect and admiration for our hearts, not for showing skin to look sexy. So now people right, are seeing absolutely. this tape, whatever you want to call it, absolutely. sexy, and they're saying, well, yeah. She's a hypocrite. She writes well, a book model. that says one thing. I'm a model. I, I, I was in a beauty pageant. I mean, if people want to call me a hypocrite, then that, you know, that's, their, that's their prerogative. But you know what? I've learned from my mistakes. No one's perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. And I think it's all about you know, taking responsibility for your mistakes. And it just so happens that you know, seven months, it's been seven months since I gave that answer. And they have done nothing but attack me and try and silence me and keep me from sp spreading that message that free speech still exists. And that's the reason why I wrote this book. You say in the book you've been palinized, referencing Sarah Palin. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I've been palinized. You know of the attacks Sarah Palin's been under, don't but you? But you think if you're a conservative woman, do you think that Sarah Palin's been attacked? I think Sarah Palin has certainly been criticized, absolutely, right. by a lot of people, right. as have many politicians. And there is a double standard out there. There is an extreme double standard that conservative women are under attack for whatever it is. I mean, if Sean Hannity went out there and said some of the things that Keith Olbermann has said about me, you know, if he said anything about Sonia Sotomayor or Michelle Obama, he would be off the air. Why is there this double standard? And that's the reason why I wrote this book. You know, you also take on um, uh, beauty pageants. Uh, and uh, you say that, you know, you, know owe, you owe a lot to them. So you're mm -hmm. not taking away from that. Right. But there, there's a part of the book where you recount what happened at Miss, the Miss USA pageant before, in the days leading up to it, right. where Donald Trump, who owns the pageant, uh, looked over the girls and held his own version of an elimination mm -hmm. round. What did he do? Uh, well, I talk about it in my book. and. 
um, you know, basically he just went out there and we were so excited to meet, you know, the Donald at the time and um, he just came out there and meeted us it and, um, you know, shook our hands and we were so excited to meet him. But there were a lot of feelings that were hurt by some of the girls. They felt as though, you know, they weren't chosen by him. And but did you say in the book he divided the girls into the ones he thought were hot and the ones who were not? Right. Well, he asked us, you know, how do you feel about so-and-so or who do you think is the most beautiful woman out here and uh, you know some of the girls were on the right side and some of the girls were on the left side and those that were on the left were devastated and um, so I mean there's a lot in this book that a lot of people don't know that goes on you know behind the scenes with pageants would you it's advise, not all what you, you know yeah, what it seems to be would you advise young women not to get involved in pageants um, you know I have learned so much and I've I've grown so much there has been so many great experiences you know I wouldn't be here today had it not been for the pageant um, in my book, I talk about a story how uh, the pageant officials accidentally sent me to the wrong address and I ended up at a children's hospital. And it was the most amazing experience I've ever had, just being able to visit with, with children and that was by accident. And so I stayed at the hospital for about two hours and it was just, it was unforgettable. So some of the most amazing things have happened to me since the pageant, but you know, people need to know what really happened and the truth. All right, Carrie Brayshaw, thank, thank you so you. much. And the book is called, again, Still Standing. I want to say, by the way, Donald Trump had no comment about what you said in your book. Now let's get the latest on Ida and the next.